There's so many tools in the toolbar on the left-hand side of Photoshop that either are not made for photographers or a good percentage of them are also legacy tools, meaning they had a use 25 years ago, but they don't today. Same thing with the window menu. There's all these panels that clutter up your interface that are not made for photographers or just simply don't have a use today when maybe they did 20 years ago. So in this tutorial, we're gonna go over that toolbar. We're gonna go over the panels, show you which ones are good for photographers, which ones you should spend your time on, also which ones you should forget about, and I'll even show you ways where you can customize the interface to hopefully cut down that learning curve of Photoshop, this big daunting program, make it a little bit simpler to get a hold of. So let's go ahead and dive in. We'll start off with the toolbar over here on the left-hand side and do a quick review of that. And then we'll move over to the window menu, which controls all of the panels that you can have open or at least visible over here um, in various parts of the interface here. So when it comes to the toolbar, I'm gonna run through my list here. The move tool, we're probably always gonna want the move tool. By the way, little side note public service announcement. Sometimes this auto select option in the top left is, is default checked. Uh, maybe if you just installed Photoshop, I believe it is, is its default is to, to check it. Make sure you turn that off. You'll, you'll really never ever want auto select turn on. Moving down from there, we know and we can click and hold on a, a tool and we can see everything that's inside of it. So I think, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say as a photographer, you're going to use the rectangular and elliptical selection tools a lot, but you know, not worth getting rid of them, um, which we're going to talk about how you can get rid of these tools as well. The lasso tool, I think sometimes you'll use it, you know, if I ever want to do, you know, remove something, I do a quick lasso and then I'll come up here and edit and I can do content aware fill um, or whatever it needs to be there. So lasso tool can be somewhat useful. The uh, polygonal lasso or polygonal lasso, I know it's polygonal, but this sounds funny. Um, magnetic lasso should go away. You're, n you're never going to use that one. Come over here uh, between object selection, quick selection tools. I think they have their uses for making selections. The magic wand is a legacy tool. That one should go away. We come over here to our crop tool. Uh, yeah, I think you use crop, perspective, crop, slice tools. These are web design tools. They should go away if you're not doing web design. Um, perspective crop, I think, should go away as well. You're not going to use it. The frame tool, kind of gimmicky. Uh, we come down here, so the eyedropper. I, and, and here's where I have to make a little bit of a distinction because you may, I, I use the eyedropper tool, but you have to remember, I'm, I'm not just editing photography. I'm making YouTube thumbnails. I'm making graphics for emails and ads and different things. So I tend to want to sample a color to, you know, maybe make text from something, whatever it happens to be. But I do use the eyedropper tool, just generally never in a photographic perspective. And then everything below there is either 3D or scientific. So that stuff should go away. We can come over here, spot healing, healing patch, all good tools, content aware tool, meh, red eye tool. You'd probably do that in your raw editor, but again, not worth spending too much time on it. Uh, the brush tool, good tool. Uh, the pencil color replacement and mixer brush tool should probably go away for a photographer. Clone stamp, good tool. Pattern stamp, you'll never use it. Come down here. Art history and history brush. Again, those that whole, that whole one should go away. Eraser tool, depending on how you work. There are times where I will erase things, so I can't say I never use it. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a member of the non-destructive club, so I will often erase things rather than using masking. So it just depends on your workflow whether or not you would use that or not. Background and magic eraser are not tools. They, again, are legacy tools. You would never use them in today's workflow. Uh, gradient tool, good. Paint bucket. So the paint bucket tool has a very valuable a very valuable purpose, but you would never use it. And that is the paint bucket tool will allow you to fill something. You can fill a layer or you can fill a selection just by clicking with it. Okay. And then you can change the tolerance up here so that it literally would just fill the entire, uh, literally or change the tolerance to something higher where it literally would fill the whole thing. But Here's the deal, guys. I'm going to undo what I just did here a couple times. So there are other ways to fill something, all right? And, and we'll change this back to the gradient tool. It's either uh, Option or Alt and the Delete Backspace key or the Command Control and the Delete Backspace key. That's how you fill something. That's with a keyboard shortcut. So I can honestly tell you that 
in the last 25 years, I've never clicked on the paint bucket tool because I always use the keyboard shortcuts, which you should, to fill, whether it's you know command backspace or option alt and delete backspace, uh, whether it's your foreground or background color, but that's the way you should be filling something. So you wouldn't need the paint bucket tool. Uh, blur, sharpen, smudge, not too many uses for them. I'm not gonna say you'll never find a use. Same thing with dodge and burn and sponge. Again, not many uses. Generally, we're gonna do dodging and burning inside of our raw editor. The pen tool and all associated things with it should go away. That is a graphic designer's tool. It is not a tool to make a selection. Don't let anybody tell you that you should be making selections with that. That is a legacy tool for selections and it is not a better way to do it. There are so many better ways to make selections uh, up in the select menu and with select subject and different things. So the pen tool is not a photographer's tool. It's if you want to draw things. Type tool, you might want to add text to your photos. Anything to do with paths works with the pen tool. You don't need that. Shape tools, these are generally graphic design related. And then we've got the hand tool. You might need the hand tool, especially again, but it's, I'd never use it because when you zoom in and you would use the hand tool, you can always just hold down the space bar key to access the hand tool and pan around your photo. So that's not really a tool you would ever actually go and click. And then your magnifying tool, but again, command or control plus or minus would zoom in and out. So that's a quick rundown of the tools. Now let's talk about how you can hide some of these things if you just don't want them cluttering up your toolbar. So the way that you would do that is you head up here to the edit menu and you can go down here to toolbar and that's gonna open up this window here. And you're gonna see all of the tools listed along the left-hand side. And then what you do is you just go and remove them. So what did I say? I said, I think the, uh, the history brush and art history brush, just drag them off. That's it, just drag drop over onto the right-hand side. It doesn't delete the tool, it just hides it from the interface so that you're not seeing it here. So you could go through and delete that. You can tidy things up. You can move and group things that weren't grouped together if that makes you happy. Um, and really, really tidy that whole thing up. But uh, as you go through here, again, you can just get rid of things that you, uh, we'd never use the single row marquee tool, but we might use these tools. So I don't know that it's worth getting rid of them or hiding them because you'd still just only have to open that. It's not gonna take up any extra space for you. Um, but as you go through there, you can just drag things over onto the right-hand side. You can save it as a preset. And if you get to the point where you're like, ah, I forget what I did and I wanna get it back to the way it was, you can just go over here and just choose restore defaults and that would load that back up to whatever the default was, okay? All right, let's cancel out of there. Now let's talk about the window menu because we have all of these different panels inside of here that may or may not be open depending on your workspace. Speaking of workspaces, but actually having nothing to do with them, um, if this idea of learning Photoshop for photographers and cutting down on all the other stuff interests you, I'd invite you to check out my Photoshop system course because that's exactly the way that I teach it. I take out all the other stuff and only talk about the stuff that you need as a photographer to get better at Photoshop. And I found over the years from talking to people that really shortens the learning curve of this really big program and makes it a lot simpler. Back over to our tutorial. And just to quickly recap, we were talking about the window menu and all of these panels that you may or may not have open depending on your workspace. So the first thing we should do, let's head up here to the workspace uh, submenu. I usually choose the essentials one, and then you can hit reset essentials, and that would reset everything to its defaults over here, okay? So this, this is what's open as we run through the window menu, and then we'll talk about what you can do with the panels. So this is what's open. Uh, again, 3D should go away, actions, um, you may or may not use them. Adjustments can stay. I think anything to do with brushes could be useful. Uh, channels, just depends on if you do luminosity masking, then yeah, maybe you want channels open, but for everybody else that doesn't do luminosity masking, you don't need channels. Um, if you wanna adjust your text character, clone source, it's not, we use the clone stamp tool a lot. I just don't think we use the clone source panel a whole lot. Color, probably go away. Comments, glyphs uh, can go away. Gradients would go away because anytime we would need to access a gradient, when we choose the gradient tool, press G, we're able to access our gradients right up here. We don't need a whole panel over here to do the same exact thing. And again, that's not really a tool that photographers are using a lot. 
Um, I'm not a big fan of the histogram. Uh, I've talked about it in other videos where uh, I just simply don't feel the histogram has a big place in photo editing. There is a small place that I would use it inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw, but definitely not here in Photoshop. History is just all of the things you've done to your photo. Info, not really anything we'd use. Layer comps, generally no. Layers is important. Libraries can be pretty cool. Uh, measurement log, that is scientific. Go away, navigator notes, paragraph styles, paths, patterns. Uh, properties can stay. Shapes should probably go away. Styles, swatches, timeline is for video. Tool presets, version history, all go away. So there's really not many panels that you would need out of this list here, okay? What I would suggest is if there's a panel you don't want, you can click on the panel, um, you can tear it off and then just click on that little X, and make it go away. If you wanted to, you could just click on the panel name and then you can click on the little pop out menu. It looks like a little like four or five lines. It's really tiny, the top right corner. Click on that and you can just choose close. So that closes the color, then I can close swatches, then I can close gradients or I could have closed the whole tab group as well, and that would make that whole group go away. But this is about all I would leave open um, as a photographer. Layers, maybe channels, properties, all of your adjustment layers here, and then possibly libraries, again, just really depending on how you work if you use uh, the feature of libraries. Come over here on this little middle panel, and this is where you'd see your history. It's not gonna hurt you to keep it there. You can see all the things you've done to your photo. Um, and then comments, which I think just should go away because it's not something that you would use there, so you can close comments. And then if you ever wanted to, you could even drag things. Like maybe you don't use libraries a lot. You could always drag it into that little middle area so that it's not taking up any space over here, okay? Uh, maybe you don't use the adjustments panel a lot, or maybe you do, but you just like having properties always open up there. And then you could always just click there to get to your adjustments if you wanted to. So that makes it nice, tidy, simple, easy to use. Um, and I think just keeps the interface really clean. The last thing that I'll say is you could come up here to the edit menu and go down here to menus, and you could go down to the window menu or whatever menu it is, and you could hide things. All right, there's little eyeball icons and it's a good prank if you wanted to play on somebody, but you could hide things if you wanted to. I don't necessarily think that that's a great idea because depending on your proficiency in Photoshop, you may actually forget that you hid something that maybe one day you watch a tutorial and you see them use a feature and, and you can't find that feature. So keep that in mind as you're customizing your interface. And lastly, just also know that these are my opinions. I'm not gonna say you won't find a tutorial that uses one of these features that I said aren't useful. But again, overall, as you're learning Photoshop, I think understanding which tools are important for photography and which tools are not can really help out.